Hi folks and welcome to this video. Uh, in this video we are going to um, study the relation between two numerical variables using simple regression. And so uh, we're going to be using the attitudes uh, uh, data set uh, that is actually originally included in R. And we're going to focus on two variables, um, ratings and complaints. And so these are um, ratings, uh, you know, the first one is an overall rating of um, of uh, satisfaction from uh, employees um, for a department and this is a rating of satisfaction of how well the department handles uh, complaints. And so we want to know if there's a relation between the two and of course we hypothesize that it's a positive relation uh, because this is not how many complaints there are, it's how well uh, complaints are handled. Uh, so one of the things we could do to uh, very simply analyze this uh, data set is we could do a simple regression in the form of a bivariate correlation, in the form of a Pearson correlation. Uh, to do that we would click on analyze, correlate, oops, sorry, analyze, correlate, and then bivariate. I'm going to reset that so you should see that when you open this uh, window. And so here um, you would essentially select the two variables and put them on the right, either one by one or you select the two and then put them on the right and the point is that you have the two here. And then you don't need to change anything. Um, you would in general keep the two-tailed uh, significance and keep Pearson uh, correlation. And that's it. If you click on OK, uh, you will see here the Pearson correlation is 0.825 and uh, the p-value is actually smaller than 0 0.001. Okay, so you have a significant correlation. And you have the same thing over here because it's a um, correlation matrix. So you have it here and you have it there. But if you want to have more information, of course, you would need to go to the full uh, um, simple regression analysis, which is what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to click on Analyze and then I'm going to go down to regression and then I will select linear so analyze regression linear and reset that so you should see something like that when you open this menu okay so um, we need to define here a dependent and an independent variable so here what we want to do is predict the overall rating that's the dependent variable as a function of how well the department handles complaints. So we're going to um, put complaints in the independent uh, viable um, box here. So here we have ratings, here we have complaints. Uh, we could go ahead and click. However, uh, I want to check a few uh, additional statistics that are uh, uh, typically looked at. So there are many things to check, but I'm going to just focus on a few here. So if I check statistics here, um, you see that I will have estimates of the regression, of course we want that, and, uh, um, and indicators of model fit, we also want that of course. But another thing we might want uh, to report is confidence intervals around the uh, regression uh, coefficients. So I'm going to check this and of course I'll keep 95%, uh, which is uh, usually uh, used. I'm then going to click continue. Uh, let's look at plots now. So um, there are different plots that you can uh, directly output here in SPSS. Uh, these two here are generally used uh, whenever you want to look at conditional normality. But we'll go a little bit further uh, regarding conditional normality. So we actually won't use these. Uh, we'll use uh, another procedure that I'm going to, to show afterwards. However, uh, what we might want here is to create a scatter plot where we have the residuals as a function of the predicted. And that is used to assess... Uh, um, whether uh, the assumption of homoscedasticity or homogeneity of variance is, um, is a, a reasonable assumption. So in other words, we should not see a relation between uh, the residuals and the predicted. In, you know, another way to say that is we should not have larger errors at different levels uh, of prediction. So if you predict high ratings, you should not make more errors than if you predict low ratings, for example. Uh, how can we check that? Well, we could look at the residual. So here I'm going to look at the uh, Z transform residuals or standardized residuals. We could directly look at the raw residuals also, but uh, they're not. Uh, you cannot uh, check them here as a function of the uh, 
uh, predicted. So the Y is going to be the residuals, Z residuals, and the X is going to be the Z predicted. And the other options, by the way, are transformations of, of, of these. Uh, but I'm going to just keep the, the standardized versions, or the Z version. That's it. Just going to click on continue. Uh, now, another thing that usually uh, you might want to do is you might want to um, look at conditional normality, which is an assumption of, uh, of linear modeling. And so um, the assumption can be tested notably by looking at the residuals. And so if you look at the residuals, you should um, find them to be um, reasonably normal. In other words, they should come from a normal distribution. Uh, and so the proper way to really test that is to first extract the residuals and then study them right, using different tools such as normality tests. And this is what we're going to do. So when you click on save, you will see this menu and you see that you can save a lot of things from, um, from this analysis. And one of the things you can save is notably the unstandardized residuals. I'm going to check that. And so that's going to really save a new variable that is going to contain my residuals without any transformation. And so here is what uh, you might want to use if you want to look at them uh, transformed in, in a way or another. But I'm just going to give the unstandardized residuals. Okay, that's it. Just going to click continue. And you have, of course, other options, but I'll stop there. So I'm going to click OK now. Okay, you see we have a, a bunch of outputs. So let's start with the beginning of our output. So this was, by the way, our bivariate um, correlation. So I'm just going to look at regression right here. So this is just a summary of what we did. Not very interesting. We know what we uh, just did. Uh, however, this is new, so we have here model summary. So these are uh, indicators of model fit. And traditionally, the one you would look at and report is R square. R square, in other words, sometimes uh, used for R square is coefficient for determination, proportion of variance of the outcome explained by the model. And so here it's 0.681, so it means uh, um, that. 68% of the variance of the outcome has been predicted by the model, which is actually quite large. Um, and so if you go down, you have a test for model fit uh, in the form of an F test. So here you have an ANOVA table that sort of uh, gives you all the, all the information relative to that F test. So you have the sum of squares. Uh, this is the sum of squares of the model, sum of squares of the residuals or sum of squared errors. And this is the total sum of squares. Okay, so side note, by the way, the R square is actually uh, the sum of squares of the model divided by the total sum of squares. So you could find that value actually uh, yourself here. Um, here you have the degrees of freedom for the different sums of squares. So this is uh, for the model regression here. Uh, this is for the error and this is the total degrees of freedom. Uh, these are the mean squares. So these are essentially the, regression, the, the, the sums of squares divided by their degrees of freedom. Same thing here. Um, F is the mean squares of the model divided, divided by the mean squared error. So it's this divided by this. So it's right here. F, the Fisher statistic or F statistic. And this is the p-value, which is smaller than 0 0.001. And in fact, in this case, it is equal to this p-value over here. So both are very small, and we cannot really see the exact value here. Um, but uh, they are, you know, they are actually the same p-value in this case because it's a simple regression. Okay, so we have a significant model fits. The model significantly fits the data. Uh, we explain 68% of the variance. Uh, now let's look at the coefficients. So here you see you have two lines, and the first line is named constant. So this line actually corresponds to the intercept, right? Sometimes called beta zero. So the intercept. Uh, so the intercept is the predicted uh, value here for the ratings if uh, the value for complaints is zero. And so here the intercept is 14.37. In general, we don't interpret intercepts in, um, in uh, linear regressions, in simple regressions. Uh, so we'll not focus too much on it. But here you see we have different statistics uh, in case we wanted to interpret uh, this. So we have here the estimate unstandardized, so no, with no transformation. Here we have its standard error. 
Uh, it's actually trivial that it's zero here, so um, so it's not it's not reported because it's trivial. It's not really uh, something that's estimated. It's it's uh, defined this way, so we, that's why it's that's why it's skipped here. Uh, you would not report a standardized estimate for the intercept. And here you have a t test of uh, this uh, parameter. So here you have the t value and here the p value. Um, so the intercept is significantly different from zero, but that's not necessarily a very interesting. Um, for example, that's not interesting here because zero does not represent anything in our data set. Um, so, and here you have also, uh, sorry, the confidence intervals around the, this estimate over there. Now, what is more interesting here is the slope, right? For one point uh, increase in complaints, what is the predicted uh, result uh, to the ratings? And so you see here that uh, you, uh, for each one point increase in complaints, you expect a 0.75, around that, 0.75 or 0.76, um, increase in uh, the overall rating. Here you have the standard error around that uh, parameter estimate. And here you have the standardized estimate, so it's uh, the same um, The same ID here is conveyed as there, except on here you're expressing things in units. So here it's one unit in complaints and the result uh, in units uh, for uh, the outcome variable, which is ratings. And here that's the same thing, but with standard, standard deviations. So here that means that for one standard deviation increase in complaints, you predict an increase in 0.825 standard deviations um, of ratings okay and this value actually because it's a simple regression this standardized estimate should actually ring the bell because it's actually also the coalition coefficient over there okay then we have a t-test of this estimate you see that it's significant and also because we're on a simple regression this p-value over there 0 0.000 reported here, so lower than 0 0.001, is actually also equal to this one and also equal to this one over there. Okay, And so that tells us that this is significantly different from zero. Now that is interesting because it means that you have uh, um, that in the population, whenever you have an increase in complaints, you can predict that there's going to be uh, um, a, a, you know, there's going to be an effect on um, the ratings. So in other words, you have a significant effect of complaints, and here it's actually a positive effect, right? So uh, whenever complaints is increased, then you have uh, a predicted increase in ratings. And here again, you have the confidence intervals for this. Side note, if you want to report the confidence intervals around this, Right, so around this uh, standardized coefficients, there are different methods for that. But one of the methods you could use in SPSS would be to standardize uh, the variables first. So here you would standardize complaints, you would standardize ratings, and then run the regression again over these standardized versions. And if you do this, what you will obtain here is actually already the standardized coefficients, and the confidence intervals would be around the, the standardized coefficients as well. Um, you have different statistics about the residuals, but we're going to study the residuals afterwards. Um, what is more interesting here is the plot that we um, that we asked for, uh, which presents the residuals as of standardized residuals as a function of uh, the predicted. And so here, that's actually good news. Right? We don't really see any relation. We don't see more errors or less errors uh, at different values uh, of of the predicted. Uh, so that's actually, a, that's actually a good sign. It seems like there's no relation between the predicted and the residuals. Okay, uh, there are different ways to test that, but they're not directly included in, in SPSS. Uh, you can, for example, use the Broch Pagan uh, test, um, for which actually there are some plugins that you can install in SPSS, uh, but are not directly included. Okay, so remember we said that we would save the residuals and so now that I've run the analysis, we should have a new variable here in our data set. And these are actually the residuals. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now analyze them and look at their normality, notably, right? To test the assumption of conditional normality, you should here check the residuals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore.
Now, it's it's a bit strange how it's presented, uh, but um, we are, you're going to see that uh, actually in plots, you can check a normality test, not in statistics. So it's a bit hidden here. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, we're going to say which variable we're interested in studying. And so we're interested in studying the unstandardized residuals here. So that's going to be that's going to go in my dependent list. And then I'm going to click on plots, non not statistics. And here, uh, I can actually uncheck the stem and leaf plot. Um, I can uh, report a histogram, if I want, of this, um, of this variable, so of the residuals. And more importantly, I can um, output normality plots uh, and normality tests, especially by checking this box over here. And then I'm clicking Continue. And then, if you want other statistics uh, for it, you can you can check other statistics. You can also use other menus if you want to know more about the residuals. But the normality uh, tests would actually uh, be really uh, straight to the point, and the histogram as well. So I'm going to click on OK. Uh, so you see, I already have by default a lot of statistics. Notably, I could look in this case because we're studying normality. I could look at skewness and kurtosis. So it seems like it's a little bit. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, a negative kurtosis. Uh, it's actually, you know, common rules of thumb would be uh, um, minus one and plus one. So here, it's uh, quite a negative uh, kurtosis in this case. Here's the histogram. Um, so it doesn't look look very normal, but at the same time, it's a small sample size. So it might be still assumable that this comes from a normal distribution. Uh, how can we be sure? How can we test that? Well, we can look at tests of normality. So here you have the kolmogorov smirnov test. Uh, this is the test statistic. These are the degrees of freedom. And this is right here the p-value that we would use uh, for interpretation. So here we have a significant uh, normality test. It's actually also significant with the Shapiro-Wilk. So what we could say here is that the distribution of the residuals is significantly non-normal. Right, it significantly deviates from norma from uh, normality. So, in other words, the assumption is violated in this case. Uh, at least, this this presents evidence that it is uh, violated. Um, so, in this case, we would uh, we would we would have a, a, an issue uh, relative to um, um, lack of uh, conditional normality. Okay. Um, what's next? I also want to show how to present. In this case, it's a simple regression. So um, if you were to report this in a paper, traditionally you would just report the statistics. But if you were to report, let's say, in a conference or, or on a poster, you might want to uh, show a plot. And so the typical plot in this case would be a scatter plot um, between, the, um, uh, between the two variables. Right? Uh, so presenting the uh, outcome variable ratings as a function of um, uh, complaints, the independent variable. So to do that in SPSS, you would click on graphs, Oops. graphs, and then click on chart builder. Okay, I'm clicking OK here, might not show up for you. Okay, and so first thing I will here check a type of plot that I want. So here I see scatter dot, that's going to be the one I'm when you check. And this one looks really a lot like uh, what I want to do, a simple scatter with fit line. It seems like it's exactly what I want to do, in fact. So I'm going to either double click or drag and drop it here. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define my two axes, right? So I want to show ratings as a function of complaints. So ratings is going to be my y axis, so the dependence should go here on the y axis. And complaint should go on the x-axis over there. Uh, side note, this is randomly generated, so it does not represent the data. And in other words, it might be different when you do it on your computer. So it might not look the, exactly the same. But you should still, st still see points here and a line. And that is it, in fact. right? I just click OK, and let's see what it looks like. No, it's not the one. <laughs> All right. And so uh, scrolling down in the output, we see here um, a scatter plot with a, a linear trend line uh, showing the relation between the two variables. So here it shows that uh, the, more, um, the more satisfaction you have regarding uh, how well complaints are handled, 
uh, the higher the ratings here. And of course, if you double click, then you can customize uh, further the graph. That's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching.